just salt seven days and a pork tenderloin. That's all it takes to make a really simple, delicious, versatile charcuterie. Why would you want to make cured pork tenderloin? I've been banking this in my bistro for over 12 years and it's always a hit. People love it. You can put this on a charcuterie board. You can use this on pizza. I have two here. They often come in packages of two. I'm going to cut off this, uh, this end here, nice and square. And then I'm going to also kind of square off this end here. Then there's quite a bit of just uh, fatty bits and silver skin on here. I'm just going to quickly try to clean it up a bit. It, this, re this technique, this technique will work if you just leave this on, if you're uncomfortable trying to remove this. The salt will penetrate quicker if it's off, but it's no big deal. So I've cleaned these up and they're nice and trimmed. I got rid of some of the silver skin, some of the excess fat, and I've trimmed the edges up so they're nice and square. So the next stage is salt. I'm going to use a container that perfectly fits these two tenderloins. I'm going to put some salt down on the bottom and then I'm going to put the tenderloins in the salt. And then I'm going to use my clean hands and they're going to continue to salt liberally, making sure I basically get all the sides and the end pieces. Now there's salt on the tenderloin. This is going to go into a fridge for, I'm going to go for about 48 hours and we'll see what it looks like then and decide whether at that point we want to move on to the drying stage. The pork tenderloin has been in the fridge for three days and it's quite stiff and firm now. It's not as squishy as it was before. There's quite a bit of liquid in the bottom of the container and the salt has mostly all dissolved. So now I'm going to rinse it off to get any excess salt off the exterior. Then I'm just going to pat it dry with some paper towel. The color has changed. They're a little bit darker. They're quite firm. So I'm just going to sprinkle some butcher's pepper to the outside. I have some cheesecloth here and I'm going to wrap the tenderloins in cheesecloth and then hang it to dry. I'm going to take my pork tenderloin and wrap it up. I have some butcher's twine and I'm just going to grab a big piece of it here. Tie a knot, loop it over a couple times. So now I have my pork tenderloin dried, wrapped, some black pepper on it, and it's strung up and I'm going to hang it to dry. So before I hang these up to dry, I want to weigh them to find out their starting weight because we're going to want to reduce the weight of these by 30% to make sure that there's not any available water for bacteria to reproduce in the meat. So this is 370 grams. I'm going to mark that on here and then I'm going to hang this up until it reduces by 30%. I've got two ready to hang and it'll probably take about two weeks for these to reduce. You want to hang them in a space that is cool and dry, but not too dry. If the space that you use is too dry, a crust will form on the outside of the meat and that crust will hinder the evaporation of the water from the inside of the meat. So you don't want a hard crust to form. The best way to make sure that doesn't happen is to hang it in an area that's about 50% humidity. That would be oftentimes people will do this in a garage or a basement that's a little cooler. If you do it in a basement that is a damp basement, you want to run a fan to circulate the air that inhibits mold from growing. As long as there's a fan on this, you won't get any mold. I'm going to hang it here. I've already got some duck prosciuttos that are hanging. I'm also doing a video about those. If you're interested, there'll be a link at the end of this video. But this room is actually quite cool and there's circulating air in the room because I set a fan up and the humidity in here is about 50%. My pork tenderloin's been hanging up for several days, over a week. I can feel that it's a lot lighter and it's quite dry on the outside. Uh, I weighed it, it's ready to eat. So I'm gonna take it out of the cheesecloth and have a look. So here we go, we have a nice dried out 
piece of pork tenderloin, we slice into it. We can see that it's dark in the middle, uh, but it's not totally dried out. Pinker in the middle, a little dark on the outside. Still very soft and pliable. And it tastes really good. It's a nice, easy charcuterie.